Nintendo is back in full force with the Nintendo Switch. Following the 2019 E3 Direct, it is clear that Nintendo shows no signs of slowing down. And with all of the huge titles coming in the near future, what are the best 10 titles that are available to gamers right now? I am NT Certified and these are the top 10 games currently on the Nintendo Switch. Number 10, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu. When Nintendo announced that an enhanced remake of Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow was on the way, not many were expecting what we received with Pokemon Let's Go. There were many changes that split the Pokemon fanbase. The introduction of motion controls, the removal of forced battles, and the addition of the Pokemon Go mechanics, just to name a few. In reality, Pokemon Go is actually a lot of fun. The game plays great, it looks great, and it's the first mainline game for the Nintendo Switch, and that has to count for something, right? I had an awesome time exploring the Kanto region 20 years after I first picked up my Game Boy to play the original games, and I wonder if we will see more of these in the future. Number nine is Doom. Doom is awesome on the Switch, and I will say that 10 times over. And, and this game serves as a perfect reboot of the franchise, and it also plays very well. Considering the Switch is less powerful than the PS4 and the Xbox One, game plays very fast paced, and that really kept me on my toes throughout the game uh, from beginning to end. Uh, game plays very tight, combat is satisfying, and there are even little hidden things as you progress through the game. Uh, small collectibles throughout the game, you know, hidden classic level areas, and that's just icing on the cake. And rarely do we see games today with an awesome metal rock and roll soundtrack, and I don't even get into metal music. That's just how great this game is. Number eight is Splatoon 2. Inkling, squids, paint, Turf could only mean one thing, and that is Splatoon. And the second iteration of Splatoon took what worked great in the first game and, and built upon that and just added some really great updated features. Inkling Boy, Inkling Girl, and Squid have never looked better. And what I like about Splatoon is the colorful paint. I suck at the actual game, but it's just so much fun running around and just spraying that colorful paint all over the place. The Salmon Run feature was a nice addition to the game as well. It's fast paced, it's hectic, and overly it's just lighthearted fun. And with the rumor of two new Switch models coming in the near future, I do expect an announcement of Splatoon 3 pretty soon. With almost 9 million copies sold, I'd say it's a safe bet. Number 7 is Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. A crossover between Nintendo's Mario franchise and Ubisoft's Rabbids franchise, Kingdom Battle is an uplifting take on both. This made me wonder why the Rabbids weren't a part of the Nintendo world already. Tactical turn-based gameplay is not my favorite genre, but I played this one all the way through and I had a blast while doing it. Running around outside of Peach's Castle gave me a satisfaction that I did not know I needed. And typical RPG effects are there, such as uh, fire effects and, and ice effects, you know, power draining, which they call vampire. But my favorite addition has to be the honey element. Being able to immobilize someone with honey is just absolutely hilarious to me, and I love it so much. There's even a Donkey Kong expansion that changed a lot of the attacks and the abilities, and, and it sort of feels like a, a brand new game. I recommend Mario and Rabbids, and it's not as basic as you may think. Number six is Dead Cells. Dead Cells is one of my personal favorites on the Switch. Taking elements from historic titles like Metroid and Castlevania, Dead Cells adds some cool and refreshing elements to an already tried and true formula. Permadeath keeps you on your toes as you try to get far as you can without dying. On each run through, you collect cells and you're allowed to keep those cells and they allow you to maintain certain power-ups that you can use for new runs. And this keeps things fresh in your attempt to escape the various dungeons throughout the game. Did I mention that the game is visually pleasing as well? One of the best indie titles on any system today. The game doesn't even provide a real story, but I don't care. Dead Cells is a must-have for, for playing on the go. 
Number five is Octopath Traveler. I became interested in Octopath Traveler the second I saw the hand-drawn 3D-ish sprites and textures. I actually winded up spending my first 30 hours of this game while at the beach on vacation last year. Octopath is a turn-based RPG with eight playable characters. And each of these characters have their own unique backstory which eventually brings them together during the game. There is a unique battle system that is very, very rewarding. The ability to see the turn order, you can break shields to manipulate those turns, and using boost points allows for some great tactical warfare. Now the story does leave a little bit to be desired, but overall, Octopath Traveler is the go-to RPG for the Nintendo Switch. It truly is a no-brainer, and this is coming from someone who isn't even an RPG fan. Number 4 is Super Mario Odyssey. A Nintendo console is never complete without a full-fledged Mario title and Odyssey is one of the best to date. Taking classic open world elements made famous by the now legendary Super Mario 64, Odyssey holds that formula while unveiling some new tricks as well. There are a few things that I would never thought I'd see in a Mario game. One is Mario in the city with other human beings. Two is Mario with a hat like Cappy. And third is Mario without a freaking shirt. Like, what the heck is that? Each level is unique, there are tons of things to do, and there are so many different costumes for Mario to wear throughout each level. It really becomes cool trying to figure out which costumes will allow you to progress further in the game to receive more stars. I waited outside of Best Buy for Odyssey, and the anticipation among the other fans was was off the charts. It, it was awesome. And, and it just felt so good. Number three is Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Smash is the ultimate, no pun intended, mashup of classic characters from Nintendo's historic library of games and beyond. Smash Ultimate takes each and every character from the past games and throws them into one big roster and adds 11 new characters for a total of 74 playable characters, which is freaking huge. What I enjoyed most about this version of Smash was the World of Light single player adventure. It just added a completely new layer of depth to the single player experience other than playing the classic mode over and over again. I could speak for hours on the amount of additional content the game offers. I should mention that the DLC characters being revealed are turning out to be great. Joker from the Persona franchise, Hero from Dragon Quest, and finally, finally, Banjo-Kazooie from the Banjo-Kazooie franchise. And those are just three of the six that have been announced so far. Smash is a must-have for any Nintendo fan, not just Switch owners. Number two is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The highest selling Nintendo Switch game comes in at number 2 on our top 10 list. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is an updated port of the Mario Kart 8 on Wii U. The game comes with all of the previously released content and adds even more goodies. Just like Smash, Mario Kart takes classic Nintendo characters and mashes them into one game. The intrigue around Mario Kart is how easy it is to pick up and play. It's the perfect game for young kids to get into gaming and for a trip down memory lane for seasoned gamers like myself. Good old fashioned kart racing never gets old and neither does Mario Kart. Anybody care for a race? And the number one game on the Nintendo Switch is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The best game on the Nintendo Switch is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I feel like this was a given, but the game really is that impressive. Breath of the Wild perfects the immersion of an open world game. The fact that I could go as far as I can see in a game really blew my mind. And I've always used my imagination as a kid wondering what was beyond those limits that the game allowed. I appreciated being able to go about the game in my own way, as opposed to being given specific instructions about how to do so. It's just nice to have choices in a game. I also got a kick out of the many shrines scattered across the land. 
Determining how to complete them was an absolute blast. The Divine Beast also added a completely different challenge to the game. And if you haven't heard, there is a sequel on the way, and if they can improve on a game that is already near perfect or perfect in most eyes, then we are in for a real treat. And there you have it, the top 10 Nintendo Switch games that you can go out and purchase today. What are your favorite Nintendo Switch games? Are there any in my list that you would add into your top 10 list? Let me know in the comments below. And do not forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for weekly videos like this and Nintendo live streams. Until next time, this is NT Certified. Peace.